So a site of gluten ataxia, which is the commonest neurological manifestation of uh, uh, gluten sensitivity and celiac disease, the second commonest manifestation is uh, called peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is a condition characterized by uh, damage to the peripheral nerves. It usually starts in the uh, longer nerves, which is the feet, and slowly ascends and can affect also the hands. It's characterized by loss of sensation, pain, uh, tingling, uh, numbness, and it can be very disabling because up to 55% of patients uh, with gluten neuropathy, as we call it, have pain as one of their presenting features. There are in fact three types of neuropathy that we see, uh, the commonest being the one that is symmetrical, affects both feet at the same time, and then the hands. There's one called sensory ganglionopathy that purely affects the sensory fibers. Mm -hmm. And then there is a third one called a small fiber neuropathy. And the small fiber means that it just picks up the tiny little nerve endings. And the problem with the last one, which is fortunately is not the commonest one, is that it can be extremely painful. So the, um, uh, the other um, relatively common entity in the context of celiac disease and gluten sensitivity is what we call gluten encephalopathy by which we mean that patients complain of frequent, often intractable headaches. They sound like migraine. The difference is that they don't respond very well to the usual migraine medication, but they do respond to a gluten-free diet. Often these patients tend to also have uh, abnormal abnormalities on the brain scan, uh, what we call white matter changes, which can be uh, over and above their age. And um, they um, can, um, as I said, improve once they go on a strict gluten-free diet. The prevalence of headache in the context of people who have celiac disease is actually quite high. Uh, a recent systematic uh, review that we've done showed that 26% uh, of patients with celiac disease, the classic celiac disease, actually complain of headaches. Uh, and 75% uh, respond very well to a, a gluten-free diet. Um, these neurological manifestations can o don't often occur just in isolation. So you can have somebody who has gluten ataxia, gluten neuropathy, and encephalopathy at the same time. Mm -hmm. In terms of other things, there are certainly much less common, but there are cases where it can cause problems with muscle, like myopathy. There is a rare neurological condition called Steve Person syndrome, which is autoimmune, and up to 80% of those patients also tend to have gluten sensitivity. Um, and of course, there's a lot of work that has been done in epilepsy, and we know that uh, a, a particular type of epilepsy called um, occipital calcifications uh, associated with epilepsy, usually prevalent in children, has a very, very strong association with celiac disease. And what is interesting is that th these children have a resistant epilepsy, but when they go on the gluten-free diet, the epilepsy improves. In adulthood, uh, the systematic uh, review that we've done recently shows that the prevalence of uh, uh, epilepsy is uh, 2% of in patients with celiac disease is more than what you might expect by chance. Mm -hmm. But because epilepsy is a bit of a heterogeneous uh, condition, it can be caused by a lot of different things, it's difficult to precisely uh, classify which type of epilepsy is associated with gluten sensitivity and celiac disease.